Hello and welcome back to Brass Chats. This is our weekly interview series with someone in the brass band world and beyond. I'm Sarah, I'm the Education Manager at Brass Bands England. Usually you've got the Brass Foundations team, our education programme, running this interview series, but occasionally I jump in to take one as well. Um, So this week uh, we're joined by Dr Roger Webster. How are you doing, Roger? Yeah, great. Thanks, Sarah. Yourself? Yes, we're not too bad, as we were just saying before we came on the call busy time I think I feel like I say that every time I come on one of these things (laughs) Um, but increasingly busy with lots of really exciting stuff going on which is great (laughs) Um, so we've brought Roger on today um, because he is one of the wonderful people that runs our player development workshop series we'll talk a little bit about um when those are coming up later on but something that I know that we're both very passionate about is that people feel good that are good in themselves and they're well prepared for when they're taking part in banding so that's something that we cover um as part of that player development session Roger do you want to start off just by giving us a bit of an outline about what you cover in your section of the day well I, I try to focus mainly on the performance side of things so performance anxiety stroke performance excitement um we, we I like to label it as that because some people are anxious about things. Some people are overexcited. And both can either be sort of performance enhancing aid or there can be a real debilitating monster. Um, so we just try to get people to firstly understand what it's all about, how it can, the different ways it affects them, the different reasons they're affected, and then try to put in place um, some basic ideas of coping mechanisms so that mm-hmm. you can get used to doing it and then start to enjoy it and eventually. Uh, look forward to doing it and and embrace the feeling that comes over you when you're about to perform in public. Um, mm. So that, that's that's in, in a nutshell, really. Um, but I think the the courses that we're doing also incorporate a little bit of um, how to prepare. So to make sure that you're in a position to give your best and to enjoy the performance side of things. Yeah, definitely. Because I think we've we've done a few of these sessions over the last couple of years although well, we did have a bit of a hiatus obviously when we weren't delivering so much um but um it's it's always so interesting to speak to people about their experiences and it's always uh, amazing and saddening how much people are impacted by performance anxiety and how debilitating it can be sometimes um yeah. just completely overwhelms people um do you think that that's got worse since the pandemic do you think it's it's changed to all the people that you've been experiencing it's definitely changed during the pandemic i think more people not just in the musical setting but in in the wider uh, public uh, are aware of their feelings and they're encouraged to discuss them and be open which is a good thing to start with but i i think everybody's been used to living in their own little bubbles uh either decreasing as it happened um, through uh, the pandemic uh, and once they're going out into the wider world, they're suddenly feeling less confident than they did before. Um, for some people, it hasn't changed at all. But there are a lot of people, I see it in my students, I see it in friends and family, that are less confident now. So so the fact of going out on stage to you know show your wares and uh, show what you can do, um, being judged, yeah. Or even if it's just the perception of being judged at a concert or whatever, uh, people are feeling more vulnerable. So yeah, mm. we, we need to do as much as we can just to whether you're whether you're nervous or not to make you aware of what could happen. For me, mm. it's just like saying uh, to a performer, right? Um, we'll not bother with any triple tongue in or double tongue in because chances are you'll, you'll not need a lot of that. But if it does come up, you're not prepared. Mm. So we're giving people that have issues a coping mechanism and people that don't have issues um the armory just in the bank in the back pocket if you like so that if it ever does come up with them or friends or colleagues they can do something about it. they can recognize it to start with and then start to deal with it yeah definitely and i think it's all of those tools um and and coping me- mechanisms that you talk about that it's it's one of those things that people often get to the day when they feel nervous and they go what do I do now a little eat a load of bananas <laughs> you know yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> usual. Um, but, but, but actually it's it's about uh, as as with all of these things and and and, and improving your practice in all ways it's about the slow and steady regular work um, and that's the same with performance anxiety really isn't it yeah absolutely yeah you've got to be dealing with it all the time 
not not just the day of or the week before uh, a performance. It's uh, too little too late uh, at that point. So it's just having that working knowledge of it uh, and look at it uh, as an ongoing part of your training. Yeah. Um, it's, it's certainly not a weakness. Uh, I, when I started doing my research many, many years ago, um, and I went around some of the music colleges, the feedback was terrible. People say, no, it's, you know, those that can will and those that can't perform, well, they'll end up, you know, would you like fries with that? Uh, that was a, that's a, an actual quote from somebody, uh, I won't mention it, but uh, it was a very high ranking um, music director uh, and he was uh, lecturing at uh, one of the conservatoires. Uh, and and I, I thought that was shocking. Absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. terrible. The final hurdle, you, you do three or four years at music college as a student and the final hurdle being able to perform um, it was a case of well, if you can, you can, and you'll you'll have a career. And if you can't, well, there are other options for you, mainly mm -hmm. McDonald's or uh, Burger King or Kentucky, uh, loads of others. You fast food, that would be a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but I, I just thought that was uh, that was us letting the students down, and mm -hmm. I think it's it's a great initiative by Brassman's England that they're taking this out to anyone and everyone uh, that wants mm -hmm. just a little bit of informed um, knowledge of it. There's a lot of people out there that, that are sort of uh, the the they've read a you know a, a leaflet and they're, they're sharing that with everybody as experts. And sometimes they do say a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, and and it is in some cases. Uh, and and I think you have to really understand it from its uh, what's causing you to be slightly anxious or what can cause mm -hmm. you to be anxious in some cases if they're not um, fully understanding that there are many reasons that people can feel uncomfortable in a performance setting or in any social uh, setting. Finding out how, uh, how it affects you then, uh, mentally and physiologically, and then finding out how you can uh, control that or remove it. In some cases, we can completely remove it, but in some cases, they get a coping mechanism where it just becomes normalised uh, and it's not a threatening situation and you can function perfectly well. Yeah, like I say, it's just about learning the tools, understanding some yeah. of the, um, the reasoning behind it and having the best best equipment possible to deal with whatever situation you're in and whatever experiences are affecting you. Yeah. Um, um, so I know that outside of um, your work with BBE, you also are involved with the Barnsley Music Hub and you've done some work with them in mental health and mindfulness um, with young people. I know we had Verity Watts, who was someone that had worked with Barnsley, uh, doing a webinar for us a little while ago on kind of basic mindfulness techniques, which is really, really interesting. But what, what's that look like for you in terms of the work with young people? It's obviously very, very different. Yeah, I, I don't get terribly involved with the young people, but I, I came across uh, Verity. I was doing, uh, for my sins, I was doing some volunteering work at a, a pupil referral unit in mm -hmm. in Barnsley and uh, I came across uh, a wonderful music teacher there uh, Bernie Halkyard uh, and who was a close friend of Verity and between them they they came up with a, a package uh, designed for school age people which was under 18s uh, based on mindfulness techniques uh, and, and it was basically a younger version of what I've been delivering for ages. And I thought it was fantastic. The way they'd mm -hmm. put it together and the way they deliver it to younger people, um, it, it was sort of no nonsense put in, in the younger people speak, if you like. It wasn't as in-depth technical, but it had every element covered. Uh, and mm -hmm. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And I, I've not seen anything. I'd, I'd looked at lots of things that were being delivered in schools and there was nothing that was as comprehensive um, that, that uh, Verity and Bernie had put together. Um, so I, I was sort of pushing it in the, I'm chairman of the uh, strategy board for Barnsley Music Hub. And I, I was sort of mentioning it to the people that run that, um, Alex and John, Alex Francis and John England. Uh, and and they, they were all over it. They thought this is great. You know, and again, they bought into it straight away that it's their duty to, to do this, not just for the musicians, which is it, the, the spin-off from giving it into all the schools is that the musician will benefit, but it's for all of the students. They don't want anybody to be inhibited in any way or sort of restricted in just living their best life. Really. And, and it, that's exactly what it does. It allows you just to, to uh, remove obstacles or at least uh, find a way through yeah. um, an unhindered path, if you like. So it's, it's fantastic. And since that, 
I, I started thinking, well, what do we do? Do we do enough at music college? I teach at the Royal Northern. Uh, and my answer to that one was probably not. I have classes and I talk to them about it. Um, but students being students, you, know, you have a class and you talk to maybe 100 people. And then you go away. Any questions? Very few. And then your phone starts to go and you know, you're know sat at home. You've just had your dinner and you're watching TV and oh, uh, you get a text. Is, have you got any literature on this? Or, um, and it's never the I'm asking for a friend. It's, it's, it's usually quite open, but they don't like to be open in public. They still, in some ways, see it as a bit of a weakness. Or, well, I better not discuss it with my teacher at college because I'll never get any, uh, it, they'll not give me any debt work or um, auditions. So they still see it as that. So the initiative mm-hmm. that I've put to the college now is that we have, if you like, a, a mental first aid triage section where um, triage being the sort of first point of call so they can do an assessment and, and get some of the students to do that. So it would be student, if peer-led, if you like. So we'll get some of the, you know, if the first years have got any issues or second years, they can go to a third year that's been, trained up to mm. to if, if you like recognize all of the signs of what we've been talking about the performance anxiety or any other social uh, anxieties and then they'll have some basic information that they can deliver uh, and failing that if they think then it's past their or above their pay grade in terms of knowledge they can refer them to someone uh, with that knowledge in in college we've got quite a few people uh, with psychology uh, degrees to psychology backgrounds in college we have Sarah and so there's Jane Ginsburg, that they're all qualified psychologists. Mm. Um, myself, and then the, the students can be referred to any of us and uh, take it from there. But yeah. I, I th- I've spoken to the students. I went through the students' union to start with, and then some of my own students, and they think it's a positive move that yeah. students do talk to each other a little bit more openly and freely than they would to, uh, you know, balding old people like myself. <laughs> Yeah, and I think as much as as much as it, this area has moved on massively over the last few years, there is still a stigma there, and and, and people do feel that. Um, but I think certainly the um, young people that that we work with in lots of different contexts and lots of different ages, um, the need for mental health support is so much more acute than it ever used to be. I, I personally think, and coming out of it's coming out of the pandemic, it's been so obvious how how much support young people do need in this area. So it is something that we all need to be equipping ourselves with um, as much yeah. as we can. Absolutely, yeah. There are loads of books out there, uh, and they mm. keep changing and wrapping them up in different packaging, and you know anything anything from feel the fear and do it anyway to uh, the chimp paradox. They all say exactly the same thing. Uh, they just change the language and wrap it up and sometimes make it sound modern. But uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing's changed in that area for years. I think it's just the understanding and the, mm. the spreading of the word. I mean, the, if people don't like the way a book's written, they're not going to read it. And, you know, I send my mm. students sometimes, I've got hundreds of books uh, from my, my past on psychology. And you give them a couple of books and then you think, just because I, I love that subject and I used to read these books, they're not going to do it. So I end up sort of um, putting post-it notes and just say, just read those two pages. Uh, so in, in the end, I think, uh, going back to Verity, the way Verity wrapped it up in, in a quite a simple, uh, straightforward booklet um, with sort of pictures and different things, I, I thought it was fantastic. Because there's no way that um, the majority of 14, 15, 16-year-olds I, I've ever come into contact with would sit down and read any of the books I've got. Yeah. My students yeah. at college don't. They keep them for months and then <laughs> hand them back and they've not been touched. You know, they say, oh, can I? Oh, I'll read that yet. And then and it's like, oh, too many words. Um, so uh, a simplification of, of the idea, basically what uh, Verity's done is fantastic. And I've, I've asked Alex for one of the packs. I've got it. I've got it now. And I'm going to take it into college because although it may be aimed at um, school age children I think it's still all right for mm. college students yeah well like all, all of the exercises are, are sounding completely transferable it's just been packaged yeah. in a really really accessible way um yeah. and and like I say I've done um mindfulness um looking at it through drama and looking at it through lots of other exercises like that and it's 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 so flexible to do that um but this is just a fantastic resource that 
incorporates the music in it um, and, and supports in how you kind of experience music, which is which is really brilliant. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that uh, BB have been delivering it because uh, although I, I don't know how Verity would uh, get that information out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yes, that um, that webinar that Verity delivered and the accompanying resource is on the members resource area. Um, so if anyone does want to go back and investigate that a little bit more, then you can do that by looking at the BB website. Um, we've got a couple more player development days in the diary. The next one is very soon. It's Saturday the 26th of February um, and it's in Rotherham. So it's not far away at all. So for people who are prepping for the areas <laughs> and feel like they need a bit of a performance boost then this is the one to sign up for without a doubt um, and then our next one that we have in the diary is on Sunday the 10th of April um, and that is in Leicester um, so either of those dates are available to book on um, so hope that we see some people there Great. fantastic thank you so much Roger great to see you and um, you. Yeah, okay. see you in the Rotherham <laughs> You will, yeah. Local for me, great. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.